Thank you for your grace, your mercy. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I search the world. Now, oh, come on, sing with me. But it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade. I never enough, but you came along. I'm very grateful for that. You put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Sing it with me. Oh, there's nothing, come on, hands lifted up, better than you, Lord, there's nothing, better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. My failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, but you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain, yes he is, is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me. Declare it this morning. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Come on, hands lifted up. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing, Lord. Oh, there's nothing. It's better than you. God turns around, turns our darkness into light, amen, turns our graves into gardens, amen, this morning, we're going to declare it this morning, hallelujah. You turn morning to dancing, you turn beauty for ashes, Come on, someone testify. you turn shame into glory, you're the It's his faithfulness. Nothing is better than you. No, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn praise into God. You turn days into God. 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. Come on. 
over your life. God is who you are. You're my provider this morning. God is who you are. You're my healer this morning. God is who you are. 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 wants to say this is that someone came in here this morning searching for an answer searching for something looking everywhere else with the words we just sang God is that person that you are looking for he is the answer that you are looking for he is the promise keeper he is the one that will never let you down he is the one that keeps every promise. If he told you it, he will fulfill it. He is the one we can lean on. He's the one we can put our trust in. And God wants to say, there's nowhere else I want you to look, but you are in the right place this morning. You are in the right place this morning. Thank you uh, for being with us, for joining us this Sunday morning service. You can all take your seat. Um, but I really feel that if you're here for the very first time, we just want to give you a warm legacy welcome. We want to thank you for being with us. And I can say this, I can promise you this, that you are in the right place this morning, that God has a word, and that whatever you are searching for, God wants to reveal himself to you in a deeper way. 
in a way that you have not seen him before, but that God has more for you, that God has more in store for you, that you would just receive it this morning. So I'm excited to be in the house of God this morning, man. That was some powerful, powerful worship. Um, man, blessed to be here. Again, excited for our second service, our 1130 service. I'm excited uh, for what God is doing in this place. Um, so we're going to continue in our worship, but I first want to say that we have our midweek service. Um, we will be back Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We're excited for that. Something for the entire family. We have kids services, and then we also have um, our youth for a couple more weeks. We'll be gathering on Wednesday. So come out for our midweek service. Uh, get fueled up. Get ready for the week as we come on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So that is all we have for news. We can, um, we're going to continue in our worship by our way of giving this morning. And I want to read a scripture in um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, um, and it reads this. It's 17 and 18. It says this. It says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. As you read that, I thought about that because we can think of money, uh, we all rely on money to pay our bills, to, to get food and all these different things that we need it, it's essential. The love of money is where we get in trouble, right? Because God wants us to love him more than he lo we love money. He wants our reliance to be on him more than money. He wants our fulfillment to be more in him than it is in money. So I'm not saying that money is a bad thing. It could be a blessing or a curse. It is a blessing when we get the money and we say, I want this and it's gonna fulfill every need that I have. And it's gonna bring me joy. It's gonna bring me happiness. It's gonna solve all my problems. How many know that is not the truth? That the only thing that can give us joy, the only thing that can give us peace, the only thing that can give us fulfillment is God. And so God is saying, do not let it be a cursing. If I have blessed you with something, if I have blessed you financially, don't let it turn into a cursing. And how we guard ourselves from that is by simply this. When we get that blessing, we say, God, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to give it right back to you. It guards our hearts. It guards our hearts to make sure that we don't fall in love with it so much. We say, I got to keep this blessing for myself. It is for me. It is just for me and my family. And God will do that because it says in his word that he will give you everything you need for your enjoyment. So everything for your family, he's going to provide. But it's a reminder to us to not fall in love with money more than God. And that when we get this blessing, that we would pour it back out into God's people, into people that are in need, and also into God's church. So this morning, let's let that be a reminder to us that God wants to do something new. He wants to bless us, but he wants the blessing that he gives us to be a blessing and not a curse. So let's do that this morning. Let's meet every need and let's, let's pray for this morning's offering. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for all of the blessings you poured into our lives, God. We know that it all comes from you, God, and that you are the provider, God. You are the source, God. So we give to you this morning in worship of you, God knowing you are the one that provides all God, that you are the one that gives all God. So we thank you this morning. We honor you and we worship you. And we say this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll invite you if you want to stand to your feet. We're gonna sing this last song and it's about the Holy Spirit. And for those of you that may not know the story, when Jesus rose from the grave and we just celebrated on Easter, he rose up, but he said before, he said he was going to leave us a comforter. That he would, he said, it's better if I go because I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And at the time, I'm sure the disciples didn't understand what that meant. But what that meant was that no matter where we were, anywhere on this earth, the Holy Spirit could be with us. That's God. The, God, his spirit will be with us wherever we are. We could be here. We could be in Africa. We could be in China. And the Holy Spirit will be with us wherever we are. So when we invite this when we sing this song, we're inviting the Holy Spirit. The, the Trinity is God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're inviting the Holy Spirit to come and to fill us up so that we can be renewed to go out into the world. So as we sing this song, I just want you to just lift your hands if you feel comfortable and just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Spirit's out, rushing wind. Fire of God, 
Come on then. Just put a half together, man. Come on, can we worship him this morning? Come on, can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning? That there's nobody like him. There is no other name under heaven. But that name and that name only. His name, amen. His name is Jesus this morning. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you this morning. Father God, this is what we pray this morning, God, that you would just release this service, Father. God, that you would have your way, that you would touch lives. I pray for every person that walked into this room. Father, that your presence, God, will overwhelm, that your presence, God, will be more than enough. So, Father God, I pray this morning, Father, as we thank you, as we give you all the glory, as we lift up your name, God. Your name is Jesus this morning. Father, we just thank you this morning, God, for what you're doing in this house. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives, Father. And we just pray this morning, Father, that you would just have your way. So we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. Amen in the house. Amen. Do me a big favor, man, right before you be seated. Man, turn around. Let somebody know you're blessed to see them here. If you don't know somebody, amen, go out of your way. Go out of your way, man. Introduce yourself to somebody this morning. And let him know that you're blessed to see them here, amen, in God's house this morning. All right. We are so, so blessed this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Good to have you guys here this morning. We are so blessed. Thank you for joining us here, amen. You guys could be seated, amen, for joining us in our... Uh, second service, amen, 1130 service, amen. We, we want to thank you for being here with us. Uh, we also, can we do this, amen? Can we put our hands together for our online people, amen, that have been faithful, watching online, supporting online, and uh, we want to thank them, amen, as well. And, and we're just excited just to be here. You, you know what I really sense? Uh, I was thinking about our first service that we had with Pastor Ishmael at 10, and then I was thinking about our, our service that we're going to be having right now. And I was thinking about the word that he delivered, an amazing word, and you're going to hear that in a, mo in, in a moment. But I was thinking about this one word. I was thinking that so many times when we, when we come to church, we may come for all kinds of, all kinds of different reasons. And, um, and sometimes we may feel like, should I come to church? And, and maybe today you're that person. You know, maybe you got invited out. Maybe for some reason somebody called you. Or, or maybe you just, for the last couple of weeks, there's been a tugging in your heart. And something's been telling you these words, go back to church. Go back to church. And sometimes I remember that's the way I came to church. Because somebody talked to me about Jesus a long, long time ago. And it was one of my sisters. She says, Manuel, you got to change your life. And she goes, you need to go to church. And back then I said, you know what? When I make it, I make it. But... Every day, there was something that tugged in my heart. Manuel, you need to change. You need to go to church. You need to go to church. And finally, when I did come to church, man, God truly, truly changed my life. And you know what? I feel that there's somebody in the house, I mean, that that's you this morning. And God wants you to know and what he really feels about you and what he thinks about you. And this is the way it's going to happen this morning through this message this morning. The message that you're going to hear right now, God's going to speak to your heart. And you're going to kind of feel like this, like, who told Pastor Ismael, amen, that about my life, amen. It's not that nobody told him about your life, but this is what, what happens, that God loves you too much, and God knows who you are. God knows who you are, and this is what God's going to do, that he's going to speak straight to your heart, amen, because of what he wants to do within you this morning. Can somebody say amen? I truly, truly believe that. Uh, let's not forget, amen, for uh, all of our Spanish speakers Amen. We're going to be having our Spanish service, amen, at 1.30, amen, I mean, this afternoon. We'll be in the house, amen, I for that. Pastor Ishmael is going to be doing not a double header, but he's going to do a triple header, amen. So he'll be preaching our Spanish service as well, so we're excited about that. So we're going to trust the Lord, and we're going to ask God, amen, I mean, just to help us, amen, I in this place this morning. So do me a big favor, Legacy. Can you do me? Can you stand with us, amen, I one more time, amen, tonight, this morning? And what we want to do, we want to welcome our, our guests, um, not only our guests, amen, but our family. We do consider them family. Uh, my kids call him Uncle Ish and, and uh, Tia Lisa. 
Amen. And uh, uh, we known him, uh, man, since we got saved. I got saved back in too many years ago uh, when I was a young kid. And Pastor Ishmael came into church. Um, I knew Lisa from we used to go to school back in, in Seaside, Monterey area, back when we were teenagers. And uh, so it, it's funny how God, throughout the years, you have those friends that never leave you. There, there, there's some good people in the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're probably one of those. Okay, don't say yeah. No, you're, you're probably one of them. Hopefully they're one of those, right? But you, have, you ever had those good, good friends in your life? Man, they're just good people, man. They always point you the, the right way. They never tell you nothing negative. They never murmur. They never complain. They never talk about people. They're just faithful people. And these guys right here, Pastor Ishmael, Sister Lisa... From Legacy Church, I mean, Sacramento are in the house. Come on, Legacy, man, put your hands together, man. Let's invite them up. Thank you, Lord. Am I, am I on? Okay. Praise God, amen. Thank you, Pastor Emmanuel. You may be seated this morning. Uh, what a blessing just to be with you guys uh, in your second service. Amen. Well, praise God, amen. I am excited for what God is doing here in Hollister. You guys are such an encouragement to us. Me and my wife, Lisa, we pastored there in Sacramento. We've been there. State capital there. Um, we've been there already like 20 years, I believe. Going on 20 years. Um, almost. And so uh, we're just excited uh, to be a part of what God is doing there in Sacramento. And then to be here to see what God is doing here is amazing. So thank you, thank you so much for the invitation. And man, I really just appreciate the worship. Didn't you appreciate that? That was amazing. You know, today, I just want to minister this message that I, I hope and believe that God wants to speak to us. Uh, we're, not, we're not here by coincidence. God has us here for a reason. And God wants to help us. God wants to speak to us. Amen. And, um, and I believe God's going to do that today. Amen. I want to minister this message that I entitled, Plain Hurt. Um, plain Hurt, not like playing it off that you're hurt, but no, playing while you're hurt. In the world of sports, uh, it's very common for athletes to play while they're hurt. It is uh, it's very well known that a lot of players will play even after multiple surgeries. They will go back on the basketball or football, whatever it is. And so it's very common for people to play uh, in sports while they're hurt. And we've heard and seen many athletes do that. Um, I was just reading a story not too long ago about a player, a football player, that was out in, the, out on the floor, out in the field playing, and he had a glass eye. And they hit him so hard, his eye popped out. His eye popped out, and they, they asked him, do you want to go out? He said, no, I still got one eye, man. I'm still good. And so, um, wow. And he said, okay, he stayed out on the field. And so these players are conditioned to play even when it's hurting, right? Um, Lou Gehrig, a very famous baseball player, when he died, they x-rayed his hands, and they found out that he played baseball while he had multiple fractures in his hands. And he learned how to play while he was hurt. And so I thought about this and I thought about our own personal lives and how God wants to help us, amen, uh, and how in life sometimes there is pain. It's, I mean, it is not an option. It's part of life. There is pain. But we're here today because what God wants to tell you today, that he is with you, okay, that he is with us, amen, even through all that we go through. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to minister this message, and afterwards, you're going to have an opportunity to come to the front so we can pray for you, amen, so that we can pray for you and so that God can help you. And maybe you came today. And uh, you said, you know what, I just came because I need prayer, uh, I, I need help. And so we're going to have that opportunity for you to come and so we can pray for you. So the Word of God tells us in the book of Genesis, 
Genesis chapter 37, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says in Genesis 3 and 4, chapter 37, it says, Now Israel loved Joseph, or Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his, of his old age. And he made him a tunic or a, a coat of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him. And they could not speak peaceably about him. Amen. So here the Bible speaks about how Jacob had uh, his sons, but the youngest, he loved his son very much, and he made this coat of many colors for him. Amen. And so the Word of God does tell us here that his brothers were not happy with him. They were jealous of him. And the Bible says that they hated him. That's bad when your brothers hate you, right? But not only that, that they hated him, but the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that what happened to Joseph, amen, his brothers threw him in a pit. Amen. They threw him in a pit. And then after they threw him in a pit, they sold their brother into slavery. They sold him into slavery. After he was sold into slavery, he was falsely accused of something that he did not do. You're talking about a person experiencing hardship and pain. Joseph experienced that. And so after he was accused falsely, the Bible says that he was put in prison. Amen. Uh, he was put in prison for a crime he did not commit. After he was put in prison, he was abandoned by others that promised to help him. Amen. And so here's a, a young man, because when they sold, when he was thrown into the pit, he was a teenager. He was a young man. And here's a young man that at a very young age, he began to experience hardship in his life. Amen. He began to experience hardship in his life. And here, this young man, he went through all that he went through, but he continued to serve God. He continued to be faithful to God. He continued to be faithful to the Lord, continued to, uh, uh, doing the, what God had called him to do. And that is what God wanted to do in his life. And so for us, that is an encouragement. Because life has many challenges. Amen. But here we see this example that God Almighty is able to Help us through whatever we face in life. Amen. Let's give God a big hand for that. Thank you, Jesus. So what I want to do today is I want to share some things with you that are going to help you. They're going to help you and I in, uh, as we go through the challenges of life. Amen. They're going to help us to continue going forward and not only to continue going forward, for, but for God to use our lives. Through what we go through. Amen. So first of all, I want to look, well, I'm going to look at the why, the what, and I mean the why, the how, and the what. So first, I want to look at why we go through these things. In the book of Genesis, chapter 39, and in verse 20. Genesis 39, 20, the Bible says, uh, so Joseph's master took him and put him into jail. The place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in jail. So here the word of God tells us that one of the first things that took place in uh, Joseph's life here is that he was put into prison. Amen. And sometimes he probably asked himself, why am I going through this? I don't know if you ever asked yourself that. Sometimes we ask ourselves, God, why am I going through this? Amen. Why am I going through this? This young man, he didn't do anything wrong. The Bible doesn't tell us, oh, Joseph did something wrong. No, it doesn't say that. Amen. Um, so here's this young man. He's at, he, he, here he is. He's probably thinking to himself, why am I going through this? The reality is that suffering takes place in life. It just takes place in life. 
there's no way around it. I think every single one of us here have probably experienced some kind of pain in life. And some of us didn't ask for it. It just came our way. We didn't even pray for it. I don't think anybody here prays, God, give me some pain. Amen. It just happens. Life happens. Amen. So here, one of the things that sometimes happens to us is that we might say to ourselves, God, why, why is this going on in my life? Did I do something wrong? Am I paying for my past mistakes? Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Emmanuel was uh, introducing today uh, the service, and he was saying, you know, uh, God has something for our lives. You know, praise God that God does save us. Amen. And he forgives us of our past. Thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus. God forgives us of our past. Um, and so many times when we're experiencing pain in our lives or suffering, we begin to think about ourselves, maybe I did something wrong. And here the Bible says that Joseph didn't do anything wrong. He was just a young man. They didn't like him. And so today I'm here to tell you that if you're experiencing something in life, amen, some kind of a pain or challenge in your life, it's not because you did anything wrong. Amen. Nothing that Joseph did deserved what happened to him. Amen. Nothing that he did deserved what happened to him. And so many times we may even think of God like, man, maybe God is mad at me. Amen. Can you imagine what Joseph was thinking to himself? God, why am I going through this? Are you mad at me? You know, and sometimes we may look at God like that. We may look at God as a God that probably is in heaven with a baseball bat. Waiting for us to make a mistake so he can hit us over the head. Amen. Or maybe we may look at God as an angry God. Amen. Like Joseph, he probably started thinking to himself, why am I going through this? God, are you mad at me? And it wasn't that God was mad at him. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say God was mad at Joseph. He wasn't. It's just life. Life happens. Pain happens. Things go through, we go through things in life that we don't deserve. We have broken homes many times. We have all these things that take place in life. Um, and it happens. Um, So here's a young man that he began to experience some kind of pain in his life at a very young age. He didn't deserve it. He didn't do anything wrong. It just happened. And so here today, uh, here's this young man that's probably thinking to himself, why, why, and why? <clears throat> there was a young man that lived across the street from us, where I live at right now. And... Um, He's in his 30s. I didn't share this in the uh, first service. I'm going to share with you. See, you guys get a bonus, man. <laughs> you guys get a little bonus here. Um, this young man, uh, he lived in the San Jose area. He moved to Sacramento. And he was renting a room across the street from us. And he was always in the front of the, his house and just hanging out. And I, one day I went over there and started talking to him. Uh, I took him out for lunch, and he began to tell me his story. He began to tell me a story about his father, how his father was abusive, how his father had hurt him, his mother, and his, do and his uh, sister. He said that one day he came home, and the police were at his house. His father had tied up his mom, his daughter, his sister. Um, 
And he grew up in a home like that. His, bro- his father ended up going to prison. And as I was having lunch with him, he said, why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to experience this? And I, I told him, you know what, I don't know. I can't, I can't speak for your father, you know. And I think there's a lot of people today like that. That sometimes we go through things in life and we say, why me? Why did I have to experience that? Amen. And Joseph probably asked himself that. What did I do wrong? He didn't do nothing wrong. This young man um, that lived across the street from us, he didn't do nothing wrong. He was just a young man. He just came home from school and all these things were happening. And so today, um, the message I want to give you is that even in the, in the challenging times of life, God is able to help us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is able to come through for us. Um, so uh, really important, this second point I, ha- I want to share with you is how do we keep going forward in the midst of trials and testings and pain? How do we go forward? Amen. How do we do that? Amen. And so I want to read this scripture. The Bible says in Genesis 39, 21, the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So here the word of God is saying here that God was with Joseph. This is one of the most important parts of this message. Why? Because how do we continue going forward in life even if it's difficult? In the midst of trials, testings, and pain, how do we do it? I asked that question before. I have suffered pain. I have uh, had my challenges in life. I've asked myself, God, I asked somebody one time, how do you continue going to church? How do you continue serving God? How do you continue living life? How do you do that? Amen. Um, I'm going to share with you three things that are, are going to help you. First of all, it's God. I mean, it, it has to be, it has to, you have to be connected to God. It's, that's it. You got to be connected to God. Amen. You got to stay connected to the Lord. You got, very simple. You pray. You pray. You seek God. You take time with God. You pray. You get a hold of God. And I was, um, you, know, you know, I believe that when uh, Joseph was in prison and he was praying to God, I believe that his prayer was very simple. It wasn't very fancy. It was probably just, help. It's a simple prayer. And I believe that as he was connected to God, and the Bible says that God was with him, and God showed him favor, and God showed him mercy. So I'm here to tell you this morning that one of the things that's going to help us through the challenges of life is our connection with God. Amen. As you seek God through prayer, as you come to church, As you worship, let me tell you something, miracles happen. Miracles happen when you worship God. Oh, my gosh, man. Miracles happen when when you come to church and these people are not putting on a performance. They're bringing us into worship. Amen. You lift your hands unto God, man, and you say, God, I'm just going to worship you. And as you're doing that, God is doing a miracle in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I believe that Joseph was probably worshiping God in prison. He was singing songs to the Lord. He was praying. He was thanking God. Amen. He was saying, God, I don't understand it, but I'm worshiping you right now. Amen. Second of all, I think you 
you need to have hope. You can't lose hope. You may not see it. The song said it. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. Amen. And so we got to have hope. Amen. You got to have hope. I mean, you can't lose hope. That's what it keeps us going. It keeps us uh, uh, going forward in our lives when we have hope. You know, um, one of the things I appreciate about my wife that in the times that I felt hopeless, has anybody ever felt hopeless? I have. That thank God for our wives, amen, my wife, that she was able to help me through it. She was able to see Thank God for those that are able to help us to see what we can't see. Amen. Whether it be our spouse, whether it be somebody in church, a friend, a relative that are able to, that's going to be able to tell you, it's going to be all right. God's going to help you. Amen. It's going to be all right. Even we don't see it, we don't feel it, but God says it's going to be okay. Amen. And how do you stay going forward? Very simple. You pray. You have hope. And number three is you stay active. You stay active. You continue. Don't pull back. Don't pull back. Um, one of the young ladies in our church um, just lost her older brother. Her older brother was 32 years old, and he passed away. He was sick, he died, passed away. Um, it happened on a Monday night, on a Monday morning. We had service on Wednesday. And she was there. I said, you know, I seen her and I go, you're in church. I said, Pastor, I have to come. I didn't expect her to come. I didn't expect her to come because I know what she was going through. And she, I mean, if she would have not came, I would have said, that's fine. You know, absolutely. Be with your family, grieve, everything. But no, she was there in the midst of her pain. She was there. And I think for us, the worst thing that we can do when we're going through pain in our lives is to pull back. It's to step back. You continue. You continue going forward. You continue serving. You continue worshiping. You continue Doing what God has called you to do, you continue. Even if it hurts. These athletes in the NFL, they go and they have these multiple surgeries. They can barely walk on the field. And they go back on the field. They do it for money. We're here. We're doing it because one day we know that we're going to be in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Listen to this. What happens when you continue even though it hurts? What happens? Book of Genesis 41, 41, the Bible says, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over over all the land of Egypt. God made Joseph a powerful man. God used Joseph. God, God used his pain. God used his pain. Because he didn't give up, God used his pain. 
um, he, he was able to be an encouragement. When I seen that young lady come to church, that sister come to church on Wednesday, it encouraged me. It, it was almost like God saying, you think you got problems? Look at her. It encouraged me. When you continue, it encourages others. You become a source of strength for somebody else. Um, your pain, it's crazy the way God works. Here's this young man, Joseph. He went through all that he went through. And here God puts him over all the land of Egypt. After he was sold, abandoned, falsely accused. Same thing can happen to us. You can, I can probably call anybody here and you have a story of what you went through. A lot of us. From your childhood. I can go up here, be up here and tell you all kinds of stories. Since a kid, that stuff, I didn't deserve it, but it happened. Um, God had a purpose for Joseph. He was setting him up to be a source for the rest of his family. Um, <clears throat> so on Friday, I did the funeral for the young man that passed away. And, and you know, we have a small building. It was jam-packed. All these young people that came to pay their respects for this young man, standing room only on the sides, in the back, outside. And this young lady that through her pain, she was able to just continue. And then she goes up there and she does her, her you know, saying her goodbyes to her brother. And she said, well, my pastor's going to come right now, and he's going to tell you to give your life to Jesus. I said, I am? I said, this is a funeral. And she said, yeah, my pastor's going to come, and he's going to tell you to give your life to Jesus. So I went up there, and I said, does anybody want to give their life to Jesus in this funeral? 80% of the, it was young people. About 30 young people came to the front. Amen. And they stood in front of a casket. They stood in front of a casket. The casket was right there. And, and as I was doing the altar call, God said, don't ask them to lift their hands. Ask them to come up to the front. And they came. Um. What happens when you continue, even in the midst of your struggles, your challenges? God is amazing. The way God works, he's amazing. Amen. He does some amazing things. <clears throat> I said in the beginning of my message that I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to the front here in a minute. Because I want to pray for you. Maybe, just maybe, there's some things, some challenges in your life, and you say, why? Or how am I going to get through this? Or what's going to happen? Well, we want, I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you that God does such an amazing thing in your life. Because God right now, he's going through this place right now, through these aisles, and he's speaking to your heart. And 
God says to you, it's not your fault. God is saying to you, I'm not mad at you. I got you. I got your hand. I'm going to carry you. You know, me and my wife experienced this tremendous challenge in our lives. I said, God, how are we going to get through this? Let me tell you something. There's a poem where there's footsteps in the sand or something like that. I read it many times. I did feel that God carried us through those times. And maybe today, you're there. God wants to carry you. God says, don't hold back. Don't pull back. I got you. I got you. Joseph didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. God was not mad at him. It was just a plan. It was a plan. So today, before you come up, I want to do something first. Today, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. To accept Jesus Christ into your life. You're not here by coincidence. God cares about you. God loves you. God knows everything you've done in your, in your past, but God knows your future also. Amen. So today, we're going to pray and ask God to help us. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, that you right now, you're going through this aisles in your Holy Spirit, just touching the hearts of people, God. Thank you, Lord. And Father, you know those that need you today. Those that are facing challenges. And God, today we ask that you, my God, will touch your people. So today, if you want to accept Jesus Christ into your life, please raise your hand. We want to just have an opportunity to pray with you. Sister, I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? Amen. You want to accept Christ into your heart. Maybe you want to read. I see that hand over there as well. Thank you. Praise God. Anybody else today? You know, when I, when I came to church for the very first time, I came to an altar. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I needed God. That's it. And maybe today you say, I'm here. I just know I need God. I don't have God in my life right now. I need God. If that's you, please raise your hand. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And now I'm going to ask you to do something that's going to take a step of faith. I'm going to ask you to please make your way to the front here. We have some amazing people here to just... Uh, help you into a prayer. See, please come to the front. Amen. Let's give God a big hand today. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus.